Hi everyone, Clues Dad here. I'm back in Hong Kong and uh, for today's video we're going to be assembling a new baby crib which we just bought. This is actually the Sunvig by IKEA. Just had it delivered a couple minutes ago. I've already cracked open the box and started taking the pieces apart and I thought I'd better make a video out of this. So this is actually uh, their mid-level crib. Uh, it's cost about 150 US, 1290 Hong Kong and uh, I just got it delivered along with the uh, Vika Visa or Visa Vika baby cot mattress, which is actually one of their mid-level ones. Also, it retailed about 550 Hong Kong, which is about seventy dollars. This one actually has coil springs and foam, where some of the cheaper ones, which you can get down to I think thirty or forty dollars, are only uh, cheap foam mattresses with a cloth cover. So we went for the mid-level one. So total, we were able to get the bed and the cot for about two hundred dollars which is not too bad um, and the cool thing with this one is actually this one of these side panels can come off uh, so that you can turn it into a toddler bed so it's basically as long as this, the kid is is short enough to fit and lie flat in there he can continue to use this well into maybe you know probably three or four years old he can still use the same bed so uh, I thought you know it's worth it to get this there are actually some cheaper ones I think the cheapest IKEA one in Hong Kong was about $50 or $60. So um, we went for something a little bit higher than that. But uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, I'll do some time lapse on this so I won't waste your time. But let's see how long it takes me to assemble this thing. It's 5 o'clock exactly. Let's get started. Okay, it is now 5.25 and it's taken to be, actually it took me two or three minutes just to get my watch to show the right time, so actually I think I finished around 23 minutes, give or take, to put it together. And uh, there you go, let's take a closer look. So as you can see, there's not really much to it, it's basically just two end pieces and two side pieces and this bedding piece. Uh, the assembly wasn't too hard as you can see, I, I probably could have gone a lot faster if I hadn't used these junky tools that come with it for free and I had used my real tools but I thought for the sake of this video at least let me uh, try to do it the way it comes in the box. It's very typical IKEA stuff. Allen head bolts with some screws through the cheap particle board wood and of course there's two positions here on the bed. You can have it up a little bit higher or all the way down and there's a separate piece which you can replace this one with which will go across. That's what these holes are for. So if you turn it into the toddler bed and you remove this fencing on the side, this guardrail, uh, and you have the bed all the way down, the other level is actually below here, so the bed would be here. Um, in that case, uh, you can have it sort of the toddler set up with no guardrail, and the kid can just jump in and out of bed. There's one thing I really don't like about this bed design. So there's this is the uh, plank that the mattress goes on. Um, it's actually secured only by these four pins which are basically eye bolts uh, that are bolted onto this plank and then go into these small holes here um, and so there's one here for the higher level and then another set down here at the, for the lower level um, but the trick is is as you can see they're actually not straight so the bolt is here at this level but the hole is higher so actually you have to make this kind of diagonal 
thing. So uh, to me, this is just bad design, um, especially if these nuts come loose. So it's it's just a poor design overall. Um, I don't know if it, I guess it's supposed to be easier. You don't have to take this this uh, side piece off if you want to change the, the height, but there's much better ways of doing this. From a mechanical engineering point of view, this is actually pretty shitty. Um, so, you know, hopefully my kid doesn't test this out by jumping too high. And I'm definitely gonna, uh, now that everything's assembled, I'm gonna tighten these up a lot more, uh, which is one of the deficiencies of these IKEA things too. By the time you tighten it and put all the pieces together, you have to go back and retighten all the bolts uh, again. And that's actually one of the failure modes of these things, is especially if you move and you take it apart and put it back together again, every time you do that, these holes through the board will degrade and get looser and looser. So I have some cabinets that I've moved a couple times, reassembled, and every time it's just worse and worse. So, you know, you can pour a super glue in there and you can try to, to firm them up, but it's basically, uh, you know, a losing battle. So to me, this is actually a really poor design and I would have changed it. And if I had known that it was designed this way, I might actually reconsider buying this. If it's down to $50 or something on the overall price, I probably would have been willing to pay more uh, just to get some decent safety and peace of mind and know that this thing will really last for four or five years. If you have a 30 pound kid or 40 pound kid or 50 pound kid jumping in and out of bed for years, this thing's gonna start falling apart real fast. This wood's gonna get worn out pretty fast. This thing's gonna start uh, start clanking around. So definitely uh, something to consider. One other thing I don't like about this design is uh, this is actually a stuck on foot that I put on. Uh, the one when you buy it, it actually comes with nothing on here. So it's, it's basically just painted wood directly on your floor, which uh, especially in the case of where we have tile floors, it'll squeak like hell. Um, a lot of Ikea furniture cheaps out on this and you end up having to buy your own feet to stick on the bottom of the furniture. Okay, so let's actually stick in the uh, Visa Vinca uh, mattress. I won't take it out of the plastic, but let's just make sure it fits in there. And that's how it fits in. See from the side, um, pretty good. I think for uh, the kid as he gets older, that'll be plenty good. Um, again, it's one of those cases you could have saved 20 or $30, but if this crib actually lasts that long, you could use the mattress for several years. So hopefully it's worth investing a little bit more um, at the beginning. The last thing I want to mention uh, in this video is the fact that these railings are fixed. Uh, when we first were looking at cots, my wife and I were like, oh, don't they have some that have like a drop down side? And uh, we Googled a little bit and I couldn't believe, you know, if they do sell those, why aren't IKEA selling any models like that? And it turns out because in certain countries, including the US and Canada and I believe the EU, it's actually illegal. There's too many cases where uh, the mechanism, the clasp wears out, the kid ends up falling out of bed, or worse yet, um, he ends up going and getting his head stuck in the stuck in the edge or something like that. And so literally there are dozens of kids a year who were getting injured or dying from cases of, I think it's called a drop down or drop side crib. So it's actually illegal. If you have an old one in the US, you can still keep using it, but it's actually illegal to sell and it's illegal to manufacture them. So uh, if you actually get a chance to buy one, I would really, really be careful. Um, and in some cases they can, they recommend you uh, permanently fasten it. And so even if it could come off, you know, drill a hole in, put a screw so that it doesn't come out again. So with the mattress at this level, the height to say change a diaper, is not so bad uh, and to lift the kid over is not so bad but you can imagine if the if the mattress is down all the way down here every time you're lifting the kid in and out especially as he gets heavier and heavier so like a, a 30 40 pound kid lifting up over this railing to get him in there is uh, definitely going to start taxing on your back um, and forget about trying to change a diaper if he's down on the bottom when it's all the way down uh, so that's why the drop side crib is nice, but obviously it's not worth it if your kid's going to end up getting uh, uh, strangled to death in the thing or going to fall and fall on his face outside because the clasp came off or the gate didn't close right. So it's one of those things that, you know, has changed since we were kids and uh, is actually now a big safety concern. So long story short, wish they still had them. Unfortunately, they don't. And uh, probably for the best.
Okay, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the unboxing and assembly of the Sunvig Baby Cot by IKEA, as well as our mattress, the Vinca Visa, I think it's called. Um, if you have any questions, any feedback, if you've used this before, if you have any problems with it or questions, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and consider subscribing and please be sure to check out our other videos. We have unboxings, product reviews, assemblies, you name it, uh, dad advice. I'm trying to test out a lot of different stuff. Let me know what you guys like the most. Uh, I've had a couple new subscribers so please give me some feedback on where you're from, what you enjoyed, what you didn't like and I'll try to uh, improve the channel as we go. Okay, thanks. See you next time. Bye from Hong Kong. Okay, so that's the uh, Takara Tomi one-way baby monitor with night lamp and with this cool visual uh, uh, volume effect.